Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have yet another interesting topic in forensic odontology that is lip prints or keloscopy. So the previous session was about bite marks. So just like bite marks, lip prints also helps a forensic odontologist in identifying a person or to give some clue about the person. So let's learn something about lip prints. We are not going very detailed. We are just uh, covering a brief idea of lip prints and other procedures and its classification and its relevance. So let's learn lip print. By definition, lip prints are the normal lines and fissures in form of wrinkles and grooves present in the zone of transition of human lip, the inner labial mucosa and the outer skin. It's nothing but the wrinkles and normal lines and fissures present on the lips. So study of lip prints is known as keloscopy. So why it is a uh, important because lip prints are very unique lip prints are very unique just like our thumb impression lip impressions or lip prints are unique in one person except monozygotic twins so that much uniqueness the lip prints has uh, our bite marks oh, we cannot say it is very unique in one person because similar dentition or almost similar dentition may have in another person but not like lip prints lip prints are very unique it will be repeated only in monozygotic twins so this lip grooves are permanent and unchangeable it is possible to identify lip patterns as early as the sixth week of intrauterine life it resists many afflictions such as uh, herpetic lesion uh, herpes labialis so we'll start with the classification of lip prints so this session is uh, not in detail about the lip prints we are just uh, highlighting a few points to write a short note or short essay for the exam purpose okay so i'm not going in detail about lip prints so we need few points to uh, make up a short note so that is what the purpose of this video is all about so we'll start with the classification so there are many classification of lip prints and one among is suzuki and suchihashi classification they classified into type 5s 1 2 3 4 and 5 type 1 is uh, lip prints are completely vertical or incomplete vertical so this is vertical an incomplete vertical then branched so branches inter uh, intersected so intersector means it is crossing somewhere then reticular reticular pattern and irregular very irregular lip prints so these are the classification given by Suzuki and Suchihashi so the uh, like I told you, there are many classifications given by Afterbayat classification, Reynolds classification. So there are lots of classification for lip prints. But we are just uh, studying Suzuki and um, Suchihashi classification. So how do we analyze and record a lip print? So basically, a lip print can link a subject to a specific location. And sometimes the slip prints will be seen as lipstick smears. So there are basically three types of lip prints which can be found uh, at the scene of crime. So lip prints are available particularly like uh, one is one is uh, visible lip prints, second one a latent or hidden lip prints, then the last one is uh, plastic lip prints okay so we have three types one is visible lip prints visible lip prints are which are visible to the unaided eye 
and it do not need any further development for its visualization that is a first one okay we can easily visible uh, to the unaided eye so we don't need any uh, that magnification uh, glasses for this that is visible lip prints the second one is latent or hidden lip prints latent or hidden lip prints so these are the lip prints which are not visible to the human eye it requires further development process for its specialization that is latent so we heard about latent image in x-ray similarly this is not visible we need special magnifying glasses or special uh, ingredients to make it visible that is latent or hidden lip prints the third one is plastic lip prints which is also known as d capital letter d d for dog plastic lip prints so these are the lip prints which are found on soft gel like surfaces like wax or butter they are visible to unaided eye but sometimes need develop processing for photography so they are seen on uh, soft surfaces uh, like wax or butter okay so how do we search lip prints on a crime scene so the search of possible lip prints needs a systematic and narrowly approach to the suspected areas so we need a magnifying lens to locate and judge the quality of lip prints then traces of lips should be looked uh, for on cutlery uh, and crockery items on the window or door glass and on photographs letters so lip prints may also appear on side by side with tooth marks on the foot products okay so the bite bite marks and lip prints should be studied together in a crime scene okay so the observation under white light may reveal the latent lip prints that can be photographed without any further treatment and lip prints can frequently be seen by holding the flashlight at low angle so that the surface is observed under oblique lighting so if the angulation changes some uh, lip prints can be photographed and in some cases the latent uh, lip prints can be detected using a coaxial illumination of episcope so episcope is just like a microscope which is used for this magnifying uh, lip prints magnification purpose so these are the uh, mechanisms visible latent and plastic lip prints and searching using a magnifying lens or episcope and various angulation of illumination so how do we develop the lip prints so once we get this we need to develop it right so we studied the classification and the classification basic classification then uh, we studied about forms of lip prints and how to record the lip prints and how do we develop the lip prints so we have basically three methods one is uh, powder methods powder method second one is chemical and third one is x-ray method so these three methods we can use for developing a lip prints the first one powder method um, is a technique usually used to identify latent prints on a non-porous surface such as glass marble metal plastic and finished wood they are non porous surface they are very flat very glossy type of surface so there we can apply the powder okay so when powder is distributed on the surface it adheres to the residue deposited from the uh, fingers touch allowing investigation to find the print okay so that is why we have seen in uh, movies and all the powder is uh, Uh, splash to the area of crime scene and they are using magnifying uh, glasses to get the print they are actually using it for fingerprints but the same technique can also be applied on the power 
lip prints but the surface should be non porous the most commonly used powders are aluminum powder aluminum uh, then magnetic powder magnetic powder and plum carbonate powder so this is a white powder plum carbonate powder okay so these are the powders used for recording the lip prints if it is on a non porous surface so next technique is chemical method so usually uh, crime scene investigators use this chemical method uh, such as iodine fuming and uh, silver nitrate um, lysochrome dyes so iodine lysochrome dyes iodine fuming and uh, also silver nitrate so all these can be used in chemical method okay so chemical methods uh, the when these chemicals are in contact with the uh, residue lip prints residue the print uh, becomes very visual that is a concept behind these chemicals just like the powder method chemicals will make the lip prints visible when it comes in contact with the lip print residue whereas the third method that is x-ray method so in x-ray method what is happening this lead powder lead powder distributed on suspected area with the help of a brush lead powder it is another method just like powder method but the procedure is different lead powder will be distributed then the dusted area should x-ray and then photographic film of x-ray should treat with required chemicals okay so we uh, use x-ray in between procedure then this x-ray uh, will be treated with chemicals okay that is a different technique so three techniques powder uh, three methods are using powder method chemicals and x-ray method okay so these are the materials used to uh, develop used for developing lip prints powders chemicals and x-rays so after that we need to lifting the lip prints so lifting the lip prints so this procedure can be done by two methods one is photographic method and transparent tape method one we can just photograph or transparent tape the transparent tape also can be used in photographic method the developed prints should always be photographed by using a fixed focus camera or variable zoom photographic camera with the help of measuring whereas the transparent tape method the powder dusted lip prints can be lifted with the help of transparent tape from a liquid and hard surface so we had powdered the surface then we can either do photographing or do a transparent taping and lifting or transferring the lip prints to uh, our uh, sheet or in a photographic film so collection of lip prints from suspect so this is from objects so what if we have to collect the lip prints from the suspect so either we can uh, do a photograph of photograph of suspects lips we need to take photograph of suspects lips then applying uh, lipstick or lip uh, or other transfer medium to the lips and then having the individual press his or her lips to a piece of paper or a cellophane uh, tape or such similar surfaces so if we have a suspect we ask them to apply any material uh, even we can ask them to use a uh, lipstick then ask asking the patient asking the person to uh, press a slips to the tape or any uh, paper so that we can transfer it so by having the subject impress his or her lips 
okay against a suitable surface and then processing these prints with either conventional fingerprint developing powder or with any uh, magnetic powder so the same procedure we can do where uh, previously we had seen the powder uh, splashing technique once we get the lip prints on the uh, this sheet or paper suppose uh, if the image is to be taken from a non porous uh, surface we need to take a photograph then enlarge and then do the tracing okay so then we can go for examination and comparison so a lip print recorded from the crime scene and a lip print uh, which has been taken from the suspect okay so we can do matching one should be taken from the crime scene and one we have a suspect we can match and do the person identification so lip prints have the same value just like our fingerprints so it gives a very powerful tool for identification because it is very unique it do not change during the life of a person and they can be most frequently seen during murders uh, rapes and other uh, such uh, crime scenes so that's all about uh, lip prints so the basic idea of lip prints is just like bite marks that is to identify a suspect with the help of lip prints so we talked about classification uh, the various uh, methods of uh, transferring and the materials that is powder x-ray and chemicals and the types the classification like uh, plastic uh, hidden or latent and very visible lip prints and its uses i know it is not a very detailed description of lip prints but still it is uh, quite enough to uh, write for a short note or a short essay so i'll come up with a new topic in uh, oral pathology thank you